Hello. So today I am going to discuss on the topic that is understanding group dynamics. So this is in two parts, part one and part two, each one consisting of about 30 minutes time. So I am going to discuss in detail about the meaning, the nature, the process, etc related to group. Now in my previous lectures I have already uh, explained how the group function and particularly how do they communicate and how we can make the group very effective. So today I am going to discuss in detail uh, the things related to groups and how groups are formed and what exactly is group and dynamics. So to begin with just I shall be showing some slides and uh, here one can see that uh, group dynamics means what? Group dynamic consists of two words, it is obvious uh, that is called group and dynamics. So group is basically a collectivity of two or more people and dynamics comes from a Greek word which means force. Thus the group dynamics is concerned of interaction of forces amongst group members in social situations. So this is the very basic meaning of group dynamics. So the whole idea is that uh, we have to understand how groups are formed, what is the psychology, what kind of members uh, are required, how do they behave amongst themselves and how do they work together to achieve the ultimate goal. So this is the whole idea of a group because today uh, many uh, assignments are given in a group to be performed and uh, then group members uh, work together, sometimes they are having problems, sometimes yeah, work is done in time, sometimes it is not done in time. So all such things are very, very important particularly for a person who is forming the group. So one has to understand uh, the inner uh, uh, story or inner problems related to the groups. So basically uh, group dynamics deals with the attitudes and behavioral pattern of a group. These things are very, very important attitude and behavioral pattern of the group. Group dynamics concerned how groups are formed, what is their structure and which process are followed in their functioning. Thus it is concerned with the interaction and forces operating with the group. This is very, very important because if people are not having good interaction amongst the group. If people are not having understanding for each other, if people do not so interest uh, to achieve the common goal, then perhaps it becomes very difficult uh, to work in a group and to uh, reach to a certain point of success. A group refers to two or more people who share a common meaning and evaluation of themselves and come together to achieve common goals. So for each group there is a common goal and they are supposed to work together and achieve. So they have to share lot, ma lot many things, they have to share the information, they have to sometimes disclose, they have to uh, uh, build trust amongst themselves. So all such things are required and it is really very interesting to identify such type of people who, who can work together and who can uh, understand each other's point of view and always put efforts to achieve the goal. In other words, one can say a group is a collection of people who interact with one another, accept rights and obligations as members and who share a common identity. Now once group is formed, uh, then there is a common identity means individuals will not be the uh, saying that uh, they are having any individual identity rather than it becomes a group identity like one can name that group, uh, group A, group B, group C. 
Sometimes uh, we also have uh, this very interesting interest in the class while uh, teaching communication classes and uh, for certain assignments what we do that we divide the class into groups. And what happens that the moment uh, some three, four groups are formed, there is a natural binding uh, amongst the member of the group and they uh, till yesterday they were not talking with each other with each other the moment the group is formed uh, immediately some sort of you know uh, belongingness some sort of uh, concern comes amongst the members and they feel uh, very close and starts uh, chatting discussing and they become very open. So, this is also very interesting that when a person uh, is in a group then always he or she is identified with the group uh, to achieve the common goal. So, they all will be working together. Uh, for their group and always they will think and compare that my group should be perform better than others. So, this is the feeling amongst the members. So, this group dynamics in fact is very interesting. Uh, if you understand the psychology and uh, uh, form the group then uh, really many good things can be performed uh, within prescribed time. Further uh, to deliberate on this issue is group dynamics is a system of behaviors and psychological process occurring within a social group and these are might be intra group dynamics or between social groups that is inter group dynamics. This study can be useful in understanding decision making behavior in area of common interest. So, if there is a common interest, so this kind of study means group formation and the group dynamics really is very very helpful to achieve some common goal. In organization it may be educational institutions, it may, it may be some factory or company or any other social organization, voluntary organization. Always it is required that people should work in a group and the a moment uh, it is considered to be a group then uh, one always thinks the part of the group or there should be feeling that he or she belongs to their particular group and identify uh, themselves with that group and always try to do their best. Group dynamics are also at the core of understanding racism, uh, sexism and other forms of social uh, uh, prejudices uh, and determination. These applications of the field are uh, uh, studied in psychology, sociology, anthropology uh, and science, education, social work, business etcetera and communication studies. So, this is really something very interesting that uh, this is an area where uh, people uh, would like to work uh, the field I have mentioned because these areas always required some sort of group where people can work and uh, people can understand. Uh, say for example, this is also equally very, very uh, important in the area like psychology, sociology and communication studies. So, uh, group is such a uh, thing that uh, it is uh, very, very important and uh, to get the work done always uh, people try to form or leaders or the managers or the one who is responsible in the organization would always like to form such a group which becomes very uh, functional and uh, uh, they try to perform that given task. Now, scholars traditionally agree that a simple assembly or collection of people is not really a group unless they have a common purpose. So, when we talk about group means there should be a common purpose. If there is no purpose common goal, common purpose, then group will not be very uh, functional or very effective. So, this is very, very important that the group members should have a common goal. Each member should have the feeling that they have the set target and they have to achieve that particular target. People in groups are organized, have awareness of one another as members of the same group and carry out communication amongst themselves. As a student of communication, I have all I have been all through emphasizing that you know communication is really very very important. It's playing very very important role. Uh, so far as the group behavior is concerned, 
because only everything will depend how people are communicating and interacting with each other and communication as you know it uh, includes several things sharing, disclosure, uh, interacting, having formal informal discussions, having concern for others. So, all these things are very very essential and important so far as the functioning of the group is concerned. So, group members must communicate with each other and also always uh, keep in mind that we all are working together to achieve some particular goal. Now, very often uh, con confusion comes uh, related to group and team. What exactly is a group and what exactly is a team? People get confused. Basically, many times it happens that both the terms group and teams are uh, used uh, interchangeably. Generally, people think that yes, group and team, in one way one can say that yeah, they are very close. Uh, so far as the functioning and other things are concerned uh, very similar, but at the same time there are certain distinct features of team and group. In fact, the word group and team are generally uh, used interchangeably, but there are distinct differences between group and team. For example, uh, we always say that uh, a cricket team not a cricket group or we have a special interest group not a special interest team. Uh, the main difference is that team's strength or focus depends on the commonality of their purpose and how the individuals are connected to one another. On the other hand, a group can come from having a large number of people or a cohesive willingness to carry out a focused action. A group is a number of individuals forming a unit for a reason or cause and team is a collection of accomplished people coming together for a common goal that needs completion. So, these are some very uh, distinct features related to uh, team and group, but ultimate purpose might be the same for whether a person wor working in a team or group that they have certain goal uh, to achieve, but the process might be slightly different. Now, coming to the characteristics of a group, now there are certain characteristics which we would like to discuss that is regardless of the size or the or the purpose every group has similar characteristics for example two or more persons group means uh, it cannot be just one man group at least there should be two or more than two people who are the member of the group formal social structure there should be structure in the group uh, that means uh, uh, who will be working what common fate for everybody is the same it's not that it is going to be individually, everybody is having the common fate and then common goal as I have already discussed, face to face interaction. Generally group members, it is always good face to face interaction. Nowadays, yeah, people are interacting also through uh, various other means of communications, but face to face communication always considered to be the very, the best one because here we can not only understand the words and sentences, but also the facial expression and body language of that person. Uh, the, the emotions and the feelings of that person, because in communication uh, whatever we are talking whether this is loaded with our feelings and emotions or not that is equally important. So, face to face inter interaction makes lots of difference. Interdependent means people feel that uh, it is not that uh, uh, a member feels that uh, uh, I can do whatever I like and I am the only person I am the best not like that they always uh, are dependent on each other to get each other's help, to give extend help, to seek help, so that they can work together and always try to meet the uh, last date or uh, to achieve the goal. Self def definition as group members, self defined as a group member that yes, I can do this, I can do that. Every member is coming forward with lots of enthusiasm, encouragement, encouraging others, you do this, I will do this and then we work together for that particular uh, common goal and recognition by others and also there should be some sort of recognition in the form of appreciation or exchange of uh, good words, nice words, some gifts or some concessions. So, uh, these, these are the things always helps each other to go ahead with, uh, uh, with lots of spirit and enthusiasm. So, these things are really 
very very important so far as the characteristics of a group is concerned. Now, there are certain stages of group formation which I would like to explain here. The one of the very famous uh, scholar, his name is Bruce Tuckman. In the year 1965, he is a psychologist. He proposed five stages of group development. When groups are formed, then what are the different stages, how the group proceeds further. The first one is called forming. The group begins to come into existence and seek guidance and direction from a leader concerning the nature of its task and procedure. Means uh, nature of what, what is the nature of task and once we understand what exactly is to be performed or achieved and then one should start trying to find out such kind of people who have some sort of interest in that particular area. Because if people are not interested, they do not have a common interest and forcefully if they are put in the group, perhaps it is not going to help. So, always one should try to identify such kind of people who have some sort of concern for that particular uh, issue or a particular idea uh, in which they can contribute a lot and they have lots of interest. After the forming next stage comes that is called storming. The group starts the creative process of focusing of its goals, but may become entangled in socio emotional and relationship storms and interpersonal conflict between individuals. When after the formation second stage comes storming, because here in the beginning people are having lots of ideas, maybe some strange ideas, uh, may be that lots of differences will come, they will not agree with each other, but anyway conflicts are, are considered should be considered also in a very right spirit and whatever good things or constructive things are there that can be taken up uh, with proper understanding, giving importance to everybody's idea. So, here this is the storming means uh, people might agree, might not agree, might like, might not like. So, lots of things and this is also required in the beginning. So, this is the second stage where people have lots of ideas, conflicting ideas, differences of opinion, disagreement, okay, let it be there, but after constructive discussion, they will come to the next stage and that is called norming. The third stage of group development is marked by a more serious concern about task performance. The diets or triads begin to open up and seek out other members in the group. Efforts are made to establish various norms for the performance. So, now this is the stage when norms, okay, we have discussed a lot we have we we, we 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 should now come up and try to formalize certain norms in what way we are going to proceed so this is the stage where norms are formed and everybody will uh, should be agree agreeable to work in this direction based on the norms members begin to take greater responsibility for their own group and relationship after the discussion now this is the stage where everybody feels responsible, oh I have been in assigned this particular task now, uh, I or my colleague will work together and try to do uh, something which uh, is very important for the group. Once the stage is complete, a clear picture will emerge about hierarchy of leadership, who will be doing what, first, second, third, like this in the hierarchy, one group leader, then other subordinates maybe uh, some other people will be responsible for certain to perform certain kinds of tasks. The norming stage is over with the solidification of the group structure and a sense of group identity and camaraderie. That means, people have a common uh, goal to achieve and uh, tasks have been assigned to them, uh, maybe one or two people have one particular particular task to perform, others have some other things to perform. So, like that, but everybody body is thinking that we all are together and working for the group. So, this is called norming stage. Now, the next stage is called performing. 
this is a state of a fully functional group where members see themselves as a group and get involved in the task. Now, the thing has come that they are now supposed to perform. Each person makes a contribution and the authority figure is also seen as a part of the group. Group members are followed and collective pressure is exerted to ensure the process of group effectiveness. Now, performing, yeah, after every discussion, norms have been fixed. Now, this is the stage when they have to perform and for performance, they have to work hard, they have to be sincere in their efforts and uh, they try to help each other come together and perform. Because just saying and discussion of course, these things are uh, very, very important, but ultimate objective of the group is that how they are going to perform, because everything will depend, the success of the group will depend ultimately how they are performed. If they are performing good, if the, the performance is quite effective, then group is successful. The group may redefine its goal development in the light of information from the outside environment and so an autonomous will to pursue those goals. At this stage, the long term viability of the group is established and nurtured. So, always there should be a scope to define, redefine the goal depending on the situation, because sometimes the there, there are outside environment, outside forces which might not be in our hand. So, we have to take care of those things in your mind and depending on the situation, we can always try to uh, change little bit, shift little bit to achieve that particular goal. Now, the further step is called adjourning. What does it mean? In the case of temporary groups like project team, task force or any other such group, which have a limited task at hand also have a fifth stage and this is known as adjourning, adjourn. That means, sometimes group decides to disband. Some members may feel happy over the performance and some may be unhappy over the stoppage of meeting with the group members. Adjourning may also be referred to as a morning, that is morning the adjournment of the group. Yeah, sometimes you know uh, it is better to adjourn as it is mentioned that when some uh, very temporary assignments, some temporary tasks have been given to be performed and uh, for the time being it is, it is done and then uh, for uh, big achievement or big purpose, big cause something is to be done. So, these things are adjourned for the time being and uh, uh, people will just uh, stop here and for some time. Uh, till the other things have come up and then they will proceed further. Here it may be noted that this four stages of group development mentioned above for permanent groups are merely suggestive. These are just suggestive in reality several stages may go on simultaneously. So, according to the according to researcher these are some suggestions some stages, but these are just some suggestions and not the uh, the, the, not that these are the only things which should be discussed and uh, these are the only stages. In reality, several stages may go on. There might be many more stages, because each group and each task is unique. We may say that 3, 4, 5, these are the stages, okay, fine, just for discussion purpose, but uh, based on the experience and the knowledge, uh, persons keep on changing. If something more is required, some more stages are required, some more discussions are required, uh, some help from outside agencies are required, okay, everything should be done, because ultimate objective of the group is how to achieve the goal, how to get the work done, how to convince other, how to work together, so that we are successful. So, for to get all these things, it is required that uh, each situation, each assignment each context might be unique and based on the time, based on the context, based on the situation, it is quite possible that person might go for some change, uh, so far as these uh, stages are concerned. Now, another uh, scholar who called Fisher in this area and he has 
given uh, a model of group progression, how the group progresses. So, this is uh, orientation, conflict emergence and reinforcement. This, this is just progression means one, one by one how group is going uh, step by step ahead. The first one is orientation. The group member gets to know one another and come to grips with the problem they have convened to deal with. There should be orientation. That, that should, should be a need that yes, the group is there for certain purpose. There is a need, uh, group is uh, required and for that purpose, uh, the group is formed. And then next is stage uh, comes that is conflict, the group argues about the possible ways of approaching the problem and begins to find, find some solution. Where there is a problem, of course, there might be some solution. If the group members are discussing among themselves, then this conflict uh, can be resolved and uh, something very constructive might come up out of this. After conflict, that is next one is emergence. Mane, Developed from the previous stage, emergence occurs when some daylight of consensus begins to dawn and the group starts to move towards agreement, consensus. People agree with each other. Okay, fine. We had lots of conflicts. Now, let us try to uh, find out some sort of solution, what could be the best and that is called emergence. And finally, reinforcement. The group recognizes that it is reaching consensus and explicitly consolidates that consensus to complete the task. So, every member of the group now uh, try to perform and uh, try to do the job. So, these are some of the stages of the group process, progression, how the group progresses. So, I will be continuing uh, remaining part of this group dynamics in my uh, next lecture, but just to summarize uh, this first part, I would like to say that the group dynamics is such a thing that uh, it is very, very important uh, in many situations, many areas, many discipline, many organizations uh, uh, to get the work done. And then one has to understand the psychology. Uh, the one has to understand how the group will behave amongst each other, means group members will behave amongst each other and what are the possible problems might occur. So, to avoid this possible problems in future from the very beginning, how one has to be very careful uh, in forming the group. So, if people are little bit cautious, little bit alert about forming and functioning of the group then they will be uh, in a position to form such group which is very dynamic and which will definitely come up with a great uh, result and everybody will be happy and will win situation. So, group dynamics is really a very interesting thing and uh, uh, people have been uh, doing this and hope that this is going to be very useful in many areas of life. Thank you very much.